three, the successful operation of any diesel engine is dependent upon the fine tolerances to which these atomizer components are manufactured, plus, of course, the unit's functional efficiency. In spite of its robust appearance and the high stresses under which it operates, the atomizer is a delicate piece of equipment. Let's see how the atomizer works. Fuel is forced through the fuel pipes from the fuel pump to the atomizer unit. The supply pump drillings to us around the lifting area of the needle valve. When the fuel pressure overcomes the spring tension, the needle is lifted and fuel is delivered in an atomized spray to the combustion chamber. Good atomization facilitates the effective mixing of fuel and air to give complete combustion. Incomplete combustion, resulting from badly maintained atomizers, can cause a smoky exhaust, which is unburnt fuel. It means higher fuel consumption, loss of power, and difficult starting, each a reason for ensuring that atomizers are maintained in good condition. Atomizer maintenance can easily be carried out by any mechanic, providing he follows the correct procedure and has the equipment and facilities to do so. An odd corner in the general workshop is not suitable. A clean workshop is essential. As is a rack to hold atomizers and a tray for dismantled components. Two washing containers filled with fuel oil or an anti-corrosive liquid. Paraffin is not recommended. A bench jig and tools for dismantling and assembly a nozzle cleaning kit and a test pump to reset the reassembled unit. Do not attempt to strip more than one atomizer at a time. The needle and nozzle are not interchangeable and only function satisfactorily with their mated part. First, wash and brush off all external dirt and loose carbon, but do not use the brass wire brush from the kit. Using the jig, dismantle the atomizer in the recommended sequence, removing first the protection cap, and the washer. By working from the top, possible damage to the locating dowels and needle is avoided. Then, remove the locking nut. As each component is removed, it should be placed on the tray prior to cleaning and inspection. Now unscrew the spring cap nut and remove the spring and copper washer. Top stripping is completed by carefully sliding out the spindle. Replace the body, nozzle uppermost, in the jig. Finally, remove the nozzle cap nut and the nozzle and needle assembly. Take care not to let the needle fall it is easily damaged. As each component is dismantled, place it separately on the bench, ready for the next stage, cleaning and inspection. First, the nozzle and needle assembly. Remove the cap nut and then the needle from the nozzle. The needle is first cleaned with the brass wire brush and checked for pitting or discoloration. This soft brass tool is used to remove any remaining carbon from around the needle tip. The nozzle is first cleaned externally with the soft brass brush and visually checked for discoloration and damage to the pressure face. A drill or wire is used to clear the internal feed channel bores. Using the special tool provided, the fuel gallery is cleaned. 
The hook end of the tool is pressed hard against the side of the cavity and rotated, freeing the carbon. The dome port cavity is cleaned next. After selecting a tip of suitable size, rotate the tool firmly. All tools are of brass and will not damage the lapped internal surfaces. A third scraper clears the seat of dirt and carbon. Any remaining would, when testing, cause dribble at the nozzle tip. To clear carbon from the spray holes, use the probe supplied, never a piece of wire. Use the tool as short as possible and with extreme care gently rotate rather than pushing to and fro. The remaining parts of the atomizer may now be cleaned and inspected. All external and internal faces of the main body must be cleaned thoroughly, closely examining pressure faces for signs of scoring or corrosion. The holder arms must not be bent. The barrel threads and pipe connections free of burrs. And check the nozzle locating dowels for damage. During the cleaning of all remaining components, keep a wary eye open for any sign of damage to threads or faces. Any damaged parts should be replaced. A defective spring cap will cause sticking of the needle. A fractured spring, faulty atomization. It is necessary to replace the copper sealing washer between the atomizer and cylinder head and other washers should be replaced if suspect. Only after thorough cleaning should each component be placed in the clean tank. Before commencing reassembly, the remaining traces of carbon must be washed from the nozzle body. This can only be done successfully by utilizing the nozzle flushing device. The nozzle is inserted and secured by a clamping nut and attached to the test gauge. Clean fuel is then pumped through the holes from the outside, flushing out all remaining carbon particles. As much care should be exercised during reassembly as when stripping and cleaning. The needle must slide freely in the nozzle body with no sign of sticking, but never use a lapping compound to free it. This would cause possible fuel leakage between the nozzle and needle. When fitting the nozzle to the main body, ensure the dowel pins fit correctly in the holes provided and secure with the nozzle cap nut but do not over-tighten. This would cause distortion and needle seizure. If too loose, a possible fuel pressure loss. After turning the unit over, replace first the spindle, then the spring. And spring cap nut followed by the washer and lock nut. Now to test and set the atomizer. But remember, when attaching the atomizer to the test pump, to position it in such a way that the spray cannot injure the operator. The skin is easily punctured or the eye is damaged by the high pressure. After ensuring that the system is completely free of air, increase the injection pressure by screwing down the spring cap nut. After setting the pressure at slightly over 150 atmospheres, check for back leakage by timing the pressure drop.
On this and short stem nozzles, a drop of 50 atmospheres in not less than six seconds proves that all pressure faces are serviceable. This setting is for back pressure testing only and has no bearing on the ultimate setting required for a particular engine application. The atomizer may now be set on the test gauge to the pressure recommended in the workshop manual for the engine type. Once set, tighten the lock nut on the spring cap nut. Remember, good atomization is essential for efficient diesel engine operation. Should any sign of solid fuel occur, as here, the unit must be rejected. The final test is for forward leakage. First, wipe the nozzle dry and then raise the pressure to 10 to 15 atmospheres below the injection setting. Then check for dribble. Any sign of dampness suggests a faulty seating and the unit must be regarded as unsatisfactory. Should an atomizer fail any of these checks, it should be replaced by a perpetuity scheme unit. These are readily available throughout the Perkins service organization. If the tests have been completed successfully, replace the identification tab washer and protection cap. And replace all dust protection caps. By following the recommended instructions and employing the proper tools and equipment, you will find atomizer maintenance simple and its benefits profitable.